Hi everyone, welcome to the tutorials on introductory Python for image processing. And this is brought to you by the Appear team at Zeiss. And I request you to sign up for your free account on Appear so you can explore all the image analysis tools, especially the new deep learning tools that you can use for semantic and instant segmentation without the need for any coding. You just upload your images, annotate, and then, and then uh, start segmenting. Okay, now getting to this specific video, and I'm recording this again based on your request and quite a few have requested, quite a few of you have requested uh, about uh, how to apply a specific image processing function to multiple images. In fact, the questions uh, from you are somewhat similar like this, okay? Uh, hey, I learned uh, something about Gaussian filtering or I learned something about median filtering or denoising or so, whatever the function is, but how do I apply that to a folder full of images that I have, right? So this is the type of question. If you have this question, this video may answer those type of questions. Okay, so let's jump into the code. And uh, again, this is something I have covered as part of my videos about Glob and OS, but I think it's worth repeating uh, and pulling everything into one specific video that addresses a specific problem, which is automating your image analysis to apply a function to multiple images in a specific folder or, or in multiple folders. So uh, let's go start with Glob. I'm going to show you four different ways. Okay, starting with Glob. Glob is, uh, uh, it allows you to navigate through folders and then identify the files. I did a video on that, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. So the way we are going to do that is for file in glob.glob.path. So let's go ahead and import the libraries first, okay? And the libraries I'm going to import are, obviously in this example, glob, OpenCV to read images, and from scikit-image.filters, I'm going to import Gaussian so we can see how we can apply Gaussian filter or Gaussian smoothing. So we And we'll save those images back into a directory. Now, when you apply scikit-image.filters, most of these filters will convert your numbers into floating point numbers. So when you save them as images, you may not be able to open them uh, in most of the, uh, you know, in uh, even in image J, that, uh, you cannot be, uh, you may not be able to open. So we'll be converting them into eight bit images so the function for that is image as u byte which is part of scikit image so these are the four libraries we just imported now let's define a path where are my images located let me just show you i have a path called images within images images for batch for this video and another subfolder called imgs where i have three images that are of completely different size now I'm intentionally showing you this because now if you have images of different size and if you want to apply a function, then it makes sense to read one image, apply the function, save it, another image function, save it. But sometimes if you have a folder full of images, all same size, then you may as well read all of those into a single NumPy array and apply the function and then save them back, okay? I'll show you both ways. So here we have three different sizes. So that's the folder and within that folder it's going to look at all the images it doesn't matter whether they're jpeg extension tiff extension um, any extension because scikit image or opencv can read all of those okay so let's define the path and i'm going to define a variable image number equals to one because as we go through images i want to uh, increase that parameter so we can kind of tag a uh, a file name you know this number to the file name that we're about to save Okay, now for file in glob.glob path, glob.glob path means it goes to this path and then it uh, it fetches uh, all the file names. So for each file there, first of all, let's go ahead and print the file name so it makes sense to you. So when you do that, you can see how it's actually printing these file names, right? So now I'll just take this file name, which is temporarily assigned to the variable file, and then just go ahead and read it. And zero represents grayscale images. So I'm reading all of these as grayscale. That's all this is. So let's go ahead and do that. But that doesn't make any sense right now. We have to do something with that image. So it reads image number one first. So my image is image number one. And then that image number one, on that we are going to apply a Gaussian filter. Again, watch my video on Gaussian filter, one of the earlier videos. And once you apply that Gaussian uh, smoothing, you get an output array, which is a floating point uh, array. So I'm going to convert that into U byte and assign it to smooth image. And that smooth image is what I'm going to save, you see, what I'm going to save into our folder called smooth. So if I go into the smooth folder, 
It should be empty right now. This is where I want to save all the output image or processed images in this case. Okay, and I, all I'm doing is giving the uh, path to this folder, and then I'm, uh, I'm I'm saving these images as smoothed image one dot jpeg smoothed image two dot jpeg and so on. Okay, uh, if you see here the image number, we are going to cycle through that. Uh, every time it goes through this for loop. Okay, for image number one, that's one, image number two, that's two. And why am I converting that to string? You cannot just join text and uh, integer together, so you have to convert that one into a string value. Okay, so this is basics, but for those of you who are just starting off, this information may definitely help. Okay, so let's run this for loop. And as soon as we run it, let's open this. You see how the smooth images are all saved here? So these are all our original images, and these are all our smoothed images right now. Okay, so these are all the smoothed ones. Let's go ahead and open it to see that these are really blurred. Okay, so these are smoothed or blurred if you want to call them. Let's delete this and see exactly the same thing to be done with OS. OS dot uh, path dot, you know, OS dot walk, for example, this is very similar to glob. So uh, again, I'll, I'll share the code so you can go ahead and experiment with yourself. I'm doing exactly the same thing, except uh, again, I'm walking through the files, right? So the way OS dot walk uh, works is uh, slightly different than glob. Here you can extract your root, your directories, your files, and for each of the file it identifies, okay? For each of these file, I'm cycling through them using the for loop, and then I'm just using pretty much the same thing, open CV to read it, uh, and uh, exactly the same function to apply, and then exactly the same method to save it. Everything the same, except instead of glob, I'm using OS. So just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and run these and see what we get. We should get exactly the same thing. There you go. The smooth image are, uh, images are generated again, okay? Now, the third method, so that was the second. Now, the third method is if all your images are of the same size, you can kind of uh, uh, create an array, uh, uh, n-dimensional array, n being the number of images in your array. So that's the process we are going to look here. And again, let's go ahead and use glob, okay? Because it's a bit easy for us to use glob. So let's remove everything, all the variables, and let's also clean the slate here. Okay, so let's import all the required libraries and I'm starting an empty list so I can populate it. So this is the list where I would like to capture each image information. The NumPy arrays for each image is going to be part of this list and I am resizing images, all my images into 512 by 512 because if I cannot have different dimensions NumPy arrays into a uh, multi-dimensional NumPy array so they all the images need to be the same size so I am going to resize it to 512 in a second. So let's go ahead and start this empty list and this part is the same, right? We did this with glob, that's exactly the same and for each each file in this glob, I'm reading it, but I'm also resizing it. This is exactly the same as the first method, except we are resizing it, okay? And after resizing, instead of processing, I'm appending it to the list, okay? So I'm capturing it to the list. So when we are done with this, you should see our image list here has, uh, has size of three, because we have three images in this folder. And this is a list not a NumPy array. It's a list of bunch of NumPy arrays. So if I open this list, you should see that I have three arrays in here, all of those same size, 512 by 512, because we resized them. Okay, this is how you process while you're doing. All of this will help you when you get into machine learning side of things, because this is how you do your pre-processing, or at least one of the steps in your pre-processing is doing this type of uh, image resizing or image modifications uh, in a bulk. Okay, uh, so now that we have this list, lists usually don't work very well with uh, uh, with math. Well, you can do that, but then you have to use a for loop to go through each and one of those, right? I mean, to cycle through each and one of those NumPy arrays, but let's convert this entire list into a NumPy array. Okay, so all I'm doing here is converting this list into a NumPy array. So when I run that, remember, np.array converts that. And if you look up here, now it doesn't say list anymore. It says array of uh, unsigned integer eight of size three, 512 by 512. This is not supposed to be 512 by 512 by three. This is not a color image uh, where three represents RGB. This is uh, a grayscale images of size 512 by 512, and I have three of them. If these are color images, then my array would have size three, 512, 512, three. 
representing the three channels. Okay, so this is a multidimensional array telling us that this is a stack of images and not just one image. Now we can go through each one of these images. Image number zero, image number one, image number two, right? I mean, so these are the three images that we have here. In fact, if I open this, you see uh, the first one, this is my image number zero. And if I go to the next one, this is image number one, this is image number two which is which makes it three images so now let's go through each of these image and apply a function that's the next part of this so my image number equals to one just like before so let's go ahead and do that now for instead of going through glob we already did that we already have an array so we are going to look at for image in range what is range if you say zero to five the values would be zero one two three four right so that's a range so for image in range, range of what? Images underscore list dot shape zero. What is the shape of this image list at zeroth position three? So all I'm trying to do here is for image in range three, which means zero, one, two. Go ahead and read the image. We already have the array. So my input image is basically the images list, right? This NumPy array with the image value. So the first image value would be zero. So that means this is nothing but zero, phi 12 by phi 12. The next time the for loop goes on, this is one, phi 12 by phi 12, and then two, phi 12 by phi 12. So each time my input image is basically extracted from this NumPy array, and then what? It's the same story. We are applying a Gaussian filter on that image, converting to U-byte, and then I assigning it to smoothed image, and then saving it, and this is it. So let's go ahead and run this. And now all the output images shall be of the same size as you can see here, phi 12 by phi 12, because we are resizing it. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, how you do it. And the fourth way is if you already have a multidimensional TIFF file or OME TIFF file or whatever multidimensional images that you are handling with, use the appropriate library to read those images. So for multidimensional TIFF file, the best library would be TIFF file library, T-I-F-F-F-I-L-E library. Go ahead and pip install this. So again, let's start with a clean slate here and clear the screen here and let's run these lines of code so these are all again pretty much the same thing we have been running and this is the file this is where our files are located well sorry i should have explained this so let's go back one more you see that scratch time series tif this is a multi-dimensional tiff file uh in fact this is a time series of something happening over a period of time time zero time one time two time three and so on so this is the file that i'm going to read right now and using tip file so tip file.imread so let's go ahead and read this and as soon as we do that you'll see that i have a numpy array of size 10 because i have 10 images each image 289 by 400 in dimensions okay so this is great with multidimensional tiff in fact in the previous exercise when we actually read each image resized it put it together into a numpy array we did all that because we have individual images. In this case, we have a TIFF stack, so we don't need to do all of that. It's already in that right format. Again, handling images for machine learning or any other image processing, these are very, very basic, and that's why I'm doing this video, so you understand and you get familiar with this. So now we have a NumPy array. You know exactly what to do. Exactly this part of the code will be repeated down here except in this case, instead of three, it will be 10 images. So let's go ahead and run this. And if we open this smooth, you should see 10 images. It's almost instantaneous. These are pretty fast operations. So there you go, 10 images right there. You can actually put them together using TIFF file uh, and write them into a single TIFF output. And uh, you can look at the documentation for TIFF file for that, but this video is not devoted for TIFF file anyway but I hope you learned four different ways to work with mul uh, your multiple images and apply a function, not just one function. In this case, we just did smoothing an image, but after smoothing, let's say you can do some sort of an edge detection and then uh, extract certain regions of interest and uh, you know uh, segment your images. You can do multiple things. So this is basically showing you how to automate using glob and other methods to do certain image processing tasks on each slice or each image in a stack of images or in a folder of images. I hope you found this to be very useful. Again, please do subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to uh, sign up for your free account on appear.com. Thank you very much.